had escrowed the recovery key. The recovery key is an active directory, so when I get on the phone, I phone the help desk, I speak to a help desk person, who hopefully does some challenge response to prove that I am who I say I am, and yes. just doesn't take my word for it. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, and then the, I can read out a magic number that's presented on the screen that uniquely identifies um, my instance of this drive I'm trying to boot. Mm -hmm. The help desk can very easily, very, very easily find that in Active Directory. They can then read the recovery key down the phone. I can type it in. Now that recovery key that I've been given over the telephone in this scenario allows me to recreate the key that's actually used to, to um, decrypt. Uh, uh, well, on the fly, yeah, access the drive, mount the drive. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the loader can now load Windows, and Windows can get it through the boot process, and we can do our presentation, and, mm -hmm. and everyone's happy. So let's, let's take that a little bit further. You've contacted the help desk. They've challenged you. They've verified you are who you say you are. You've been given this key. Mm -hmm. Uh, I assume these keys are relatively long, so you're having to write it down. Well, how, how many characters? Are actually, they've intentionally been designed to make it very easy so people don't have to write it down. Oh, okay. When you look at, the, they're quite long. Mm -hmm. They're 48 characters. Okay. But they're split into eight lots of six. And until you get the first six digits correct, you don't move on to the next six digits. Okay. So basically, each one has a checksum, and the UI represents it as eight lots of six. So what we recommend is type in the first eight characters. It might be a one five seven two five three. I type in that. If I typed it incorrectly, I move to the next block of six characters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just repeat eight times, so it's quite easy. I've just got to remember six digits. At a time. Okay. At a time, I just have to do that eight times, so I don't have to write it down. And then once I've got them all correct, that gives enough entropy for us to be able to create a key. And away. Okay, so let's assume that we do write it down, though. Okay. Would it then be advised to uh, decrypt that drive and then re-encrypt it so that we get a new recovery password, or is that really not a consideration that we have to be concerned with? Um, whenever a recovery key has been given to an individual, um, I guess a good practice would be to recreate that recovery key, but you don't have to decrypt the whole hard drive. Okay. BitRocker was created, I mentioned this just earlier actually, there's key abstraction built into the design of, of BitRocker drive encryption. Uh, I, I don't have the diagram in front of me, although I probably could email you one that you might want to put on the other okay. website. Okay, we'll add that to the resources. But, but, but the bottom line, if you think of it, here's the key entry key that's used to actually encrypt and decrypt the physical volume itself. Mm -hmm. There's a master key that sits in the middle, and then there's the actual key that, that, that's used to, uh, 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 as these two parts together, we create this key. Mm -hmm. Now, I can rechange this key because it's upstream, right? and then I don't have to uh, uh, decrypt the whole hard drive because there's not a direct correlation. There's okay. an intermediary key. Okay. So I can re-roll this entropy and not have to re-decrypt and re-encrypt the whole hard drive because you know, with a 250 gig, 350 gig hard drive, that may take a little Takes while. a little time. Well, I mean, BitRockers are quick, all right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really fast. Depending on the hard drive, laptop drives tend to be slower. So, you, you know, you're looking at about a gig a minute. Um, you know, hard drives, you know, if you've got a 15,000 RPM SCSI hard drive in your gaming box at home, like <laughs> I'm sure some of you do, then it's going to be awfully quick. But the, the bottom line is, you know, you don't have to do that with BitRocker. Okay. Um, I, I'll answer another question on the matter of performance. Let me address something else head on whilst we're there. Uh, I often get asked the question, what's the overhead? And am I going to no. notice BitLocker? No, is the answer to that. I mean, clearly this sum, right? If you're encrypting some memory as you're writing it to the disk, clearly there's something happening. Right? Um, the total cost of throughput is between 4 and 6 and 7%. So single digit. Oh, yeah. And, and so as a human, we probably won't be able to tell. But if we fire a performance monitor, it'll have charts that go all over the place. Yeah, you, even performance monitors, you know, five and six percent can sometimes within fall within the margin of error, depending on what you're doing. Right. But yes, a well-written performance monitor will notice a small delta. Okay. I challenge most people to notice the difference between 10 seconds to average their Word document and 10.5. Yeah, I, I, my system, for the record, is bit locked. And I'm using a combination of the TPM chip and the USB memory stick. Yep. I see absolutely no performance hit whatsoever. And, you know, it, it did take some time to completely encrypt sure. the system. Sure. But you know, that's something that I said. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this right before bed. 
I decided to turn on the encryption, to let it do the encryption, and everything was fine. So. Uh, and th that's a good point you bring up there. So BitLocker was designed to uh, basically turn a drive from plain text, uh, i.e. the state it was in before you turned on BitLocker, to cipher text, i.e. The, the ideal state where everything's encrypted, even slack and black, uh, blank space. Mm -hmm. um, because um, uh, uh, unallocated clusters or blocks on the drive may be unallocated because they used to be allocated. In other words, they used to have a file in, in them. And whilst you may have thought you've deleted a file, it's probably still sitting on the disk. Yeah. So that space may or may not get used by the operating system at some point later down the line. But when you turn on BitLocker, we need to make, you know, to, to be able to make the security bar at the right level, we encrypt everything. But that's fully transacted, so you can turn on that BitLocker you know, before you go to bed. Um, like an admin may set a policy that when you first connect your laptop to the domain, you know, you're a new employee, you've got your new laptop, you plug it in, BitLocker's turned on, the keys are escrowed, and in, in the background it's doing that conversion process, but you can continue to work. Yeah. And it actually throttles. And it's fully transacted, so if I close my laptop lid and then go you know, to a meeting, as soon as I open the lid it will continue where, where it left off. Same thing with a reboot or even a power outage. Absolutely. It picks up where it left off. Absolutely, even if you pull the plug. Yep. That's, that's, that's very good information, I think, for the audience to know. Uh, let's, let's go back to the keys real quick. I have one more question on sure. that. Sure. Is there any way to have a, a master key? And this uh, to approach it from two different ways. Okay. Uh, we obviously can escrow the keys through Active Directory, but that would be unique keys per machine. Correct. Is there such thing as an admin master key for an organization so that for Contoso? I see. Okay. <laughs> for Contoso, they've implemented BitLocker. They have one key that an admin can go machine to machine to machine and use that to unlock. No, we do not have that concept of a grand master key. Okay. Um, there's some good security reasons why you wouldn't want to do that, yeah. fairly obviously. Yeah. You lose one key, you've got to decrypt and re encrypt every machine in your enterprise. Exactly. Um, and kind of associated with that, there's no magic key that we have either. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no back doors to BitLocker. I want to make sure that very clear. There's no master key. Um, the encryption is as strong as AES. It's a standard AES implementation. Um, you know, 250, frankly, 128-bit AES is plenty strong enough. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a one-to-one -one ratio between volumes encrypted and recovery keys. So if you have three volumes on your hard drive, there are three keys associated with your physical machine. Okay. There's no magic master key that's going to allow you to to unlock all of them, or all for a group, or a company, or multiple companies. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let's move off in a couple of other different directions. I've got sure. a couple of questions to ask on this. Okay. Uh, we've already mentioned that with the initial release of Vista, we can encrypt just the C drive. That's right. With Vista SP1, yep. we'll extend that out to other uh, physical or, or even logical partitions on the system. Yep. That is already built into Windows 2008. Yes, certainly. Is. What about bootable RAID devices? Any considerations there? That's a great, great question. Um, it, it's a question that comes up, not just bootable RAID, but also NASes and SANS. That was going to be my next. Can Network we, attached networks, storage yes. and SANS. So, in simple terms, BitLocker conceives of a one-to-one -one ratio between a volume and the TPM or something, that which has got the key. And the key here is that it's volume, not physical disk. Volumes can span physical disks. Right. I myself have a, uh, have a RAID 0 striped machine at home and a JBOD, which if you think about JBOD can span multiple disks. Mm -hmm. right? So my RAID 0, which is my OS volume, it's a gaming box, I haven't bothered to protect it because um, it's got Windows on it, nothing particularly important. My JBOD I could have if I chose to do so. I don't because I've just got pictures and games on it. But if I wanted to do so, I could because it appears as one volume. BitRocker lives direct, if you think about the disk stack, and they've got all the filter drivers, right down, right low in the stack, you've got the volume manager. That's the piece of code that understands, if you will, structures of disks better than anything above the stack. BitRocker is kind of glued directly above the volume manager. So it's pretty much the last thing something sees before it goes out to the disk, and the first thing that um, data sees as it comes off the disk. Because of where it, it, it lives, that means that it, it, it can handle raids and so forth in certain configurations. Network attack storage will work in, 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 in um, most uh, situations because the way network attack storage tends to work is you've got an intelligent machine with some storage on it that's sharing that storage across the network. 
that machine, as long as it's you know, bitlock protected and, 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 and compliant, is effectively translating uh, read and file open and close and write requests.